Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the CD guy, Johnny Z here, and it's time for Talking Albums number 17. And today, I'm going to be ranking the studio albums of the one and only Alice Cooper, whether it be, you know, the Alice Cooper band or Alice is a solo artist, one of my favorites of all time. And, you know, 28 albums in total, a lot to unpack here, so I'm going to get right into it. Be sure to watch the whole video. Stay tuned for the end of the video, where I'm going to show off a really rare piece of Alice memorabilia, so you don't want to miss that. So let's get into my ranking. So, number 28 on my list, I'm going to go with 1982's Zipper Catches Skin, and uh, just where, where, where to begin on this album, man? This is just so bad. In my opinion, one of the worst albums ever made. Alice, you can see him on the back here, just so deep into his drug and alcohol addiction here, just rambling on this album. There's really not much of any kind of substance on here. Nothing I, I enjoy. Um, doesn't do anything at all for me. I never listened to this album. I absolutely can't stand it. Um... You know, poor Alice has seen better days here, and just a really terrible album from a great musician in Alice Cooper. Not an album I listen to, like I said, at all. Uh, it, it's sad more than anything else, right? My number 28, my least favorite Alice Cooper album, Zipper Catches Skin from 1982. Number 26 and 27 are going to be Pretties For You and Easy Action. Um, the first two Alice Cooper albums from the original group on Frank Zappa's label. Uh, I have them in my collection, I just don't know where they are, can't find them right now, which is okay, because I never listened to those albums anyway. Uh, like I said, with Zipper Catch's Skin, they just don't do anything for me like that album, and, you know, they're not bad, like Zipper Catch's Skin is bad, but this is, you know, really lackluster, pretty boring. The Alice Cooper group would obviously get a lot better, um, they would definitely mature a lot as a band, uh, form their own identity. These two albums, just kind of, you know, out there for the sake of making albums, right? Super ambitious Alice Cooper group, but, you know, nothing of any substance to me personally, and, you know, I almost don't include them as real Alice Cooper albums because, you know, what the Alice Cooper group would become when they found their own, right, with working with Bob Ezrin, and, you know, these early albums like this just really don't do anything for me at all, so yeah, my 26 and 27, Easy Action and Pretties for You. Number 25 on the list, I'm going to go with 1981 Special Forces, you know, kind of in the same boat as Zipper Catches Skin, you can see Alice there, definitely seen better days, both, you know, you know, he looks pretty rough, and also creatively, right, just completely burnt out at this point, and another one of the Blackout albums, Alice does not remember recording it, and a lot of weak material on here, you know, just abysmal stuff like, uh, you look good in rags, is terrible, don't talk old to me, look at you over there, ripping the sawdust from my teddy bear, you know, you want it, you got it. Pretty bad stuff on here. That being said, there is some okay stuff on here, right? Who do you think we are is pretty good. 7 and 7 is the fine cover. Skeletons in the Closet, I actually think is pretty underrated. Probably the closest thing here to a traditional Alice Cooper song, right? Prettiest Cop on the Block is, like, so bad it's good. I think that it's really stupid, but at the same time it works, right? With Alice's sense of humor. And then you got Generation Landslide, 81, live recording of the song of Billion Dollar Babies. And it's a pretty bad sign when the best song off of your album is a live recording of a song you put out almost 10 years previous, right? You know, not an album I really ever listened to. I think it's very weak. Um, like I said, one of Alice's Blackout albums. Uh, not a lot of great stuff out of that period. A few good albums, but ultimately, you know, Alice fell flat, would eventually get uh, kicked off of Warner Records. Uh, by the end of 1983, they were done with him. Record sales plummeting. I'm not even sure if this album charted. I don't think it did in the U.S. And, you know, pretty bad stuff here from Alice, who, like I said, looks pretty rough here, has seen better days. My number 25, Special Forces from 1981. My number 24, I'm going to go with Dirty Diamonds from 2005. You know, it's not bad, but I think that there's a lot of really weak material on here that, you know, is pretty forgettable. There's a lot of humor sprinkled throughout that it almost gets to be too much at a certain point. You know, a lot of these songs are jokes, sort of. You know, tracks like Saga of Jesse Jane, Sunset Babies All Got Rabies, Steal That Car, Pretty Ballerina, Zombie Dance. You know, pretty goofy stuff. Doesn't do that much for me. I like, you know, Alice Cooper's humor mixed with, you know, some great rock music. But I feel like this is just too heavy on the humor. That being said, some standouts for me here. Woman of Mass Distraction. Good song, live stable for Alice now. Um, a fun play on words, too. Dirty Diamonds. I like the saga of Jesse Jane, even though it's really stupid. Run Down the Devil is good as well. Uh, you know, some okay stuff on here, but pretty forgettable in my opinion. Pretty disappointing release by Alice. My number 24, Dirty Diamonds of 2005. For my number 23, I'm going to go with Lace and Whiskey from 1977. You know, Alice stepping away from his more... Halloween-y, sinister character, and adopting a 
alter ego of Maurice Escargot, who, you know, he's a heavily drinking, comedic relief kind of a character, right? And, you know, it's pretty different for Alice, right? Um, it's kind of a misfire for me, you know? Some standouts here. It's hot tonight. The title track is okay. Damned if you do, and you and me. But the rest of the songs here, they just don't do anything for me. I think it's a pretty lackluster release from Alice. Like I said, a pretty big misfire. And he would recover from this this misfire of an album, but for me, pretty lackluster. It's going to come towards the bottom of my list. So, yeah, my number 23 is going to be Lace and Whiskey from 1977. Coming up at number 22, I'm going to go with The Eyes of Alice Cooper from 2003. Alice reverting back to his hard rock sound here after doing the industrial thing for a few years. I still think it's a pretty heavy album. Um, it's, it's a solid album, right? Some standouts for me here between high school and old school, Man of the Year. Nova Kane, Detroit City, um, and then to close things out, Backyard Brawl, which I'm a wrestling fan, so I think that song is pretty cool. All in all, a pretty solid album, like I said, but, you know, kind of forgettable from Alice. He doesn't play any of these songs live anymore. He did recently re-record Detroit City for his most recent album, Detroit Stories, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, but that's the most Alice has really uh, given attention to this album in many years. Uh, pretty forgettable release by him. My number 22 on my list, The Eyes of Alice Cooper from 2003. My number 21, I'm going to go with Alone Came a Spider uh, from 2008. Um, a very solid album here, a pretty cool concept album, expanding the story of Steven, who, spoiler alert, in the final track here, I Am the Spider slash Epilogue, reveals himself to be the serial killer known as the Spider. Right, pretty cool stuff. Far and away, the best song on here is Vengeance is Mine, which features Slash on guitar. He does a killer guitar solo here. Some really solid stuff, some pretty cool deep cuts on here from Alice, and my number 21 on the list, Along Came a Spider from 2008. Coming up at number 20, I'm going to go with Dragon Town from 2001. You know, this is an album similar to Brutal Planet in that it's um, another industrial album from Alice, a lot heavier than his previous albums. And in my opinion, this will always be in the shadow of the greatness that is Brutal Planet. And I'll get into Brutal Planet a little bit later. But still some solid stuff on here. Some really heavy stuff like Trigger Man, the title track, Somewhere in the Jungle, Disgraceland. It's a really cool name for a song. The Sentinel. And then I also have a bonus CD on here, which includes one of my favorite Alice Deep Cuts, because it's pretty funny. The Clowns Will Eat Me, which pretty cool. You know, some good stuff on here. My number 20 on my list. Uh, pretty heavy, not as good as Brutal Planet. I'll talk about Brutal Planet a little bit later, but right now, coming in at number 20, going to go with Dragon Town from 2001. Coming up at number 19, I'm going to go with Welcome to My Nightmare, the sequel to Welcome to My Nightmare. You know, I think sequel albums are never as good as the original, like, ever. Um, but some really solid stuff on here. I Am Made of You, Caffeine, I'll Bite Your Face Off, Something to Remember Me, my, me By, and The Underture. You know, I gotta get out of here. Pretty good stuff. Continuing the story of Steven. You know, the story of Steven progresses throughout Alice's solo discography, which is really cool to see, right? And like I said, a pretty solid album. Definitely, definitely not as good as Welcome to My Nightmare. Um, the original and the sequel never as good, right? So coming in at number 19, I'm going to go with Welcome to My Nightmare from 2011. Coming up at number 18, I'm going to go with Paranormal from 2017. Alice, in the later stage of his career here, still pumping out really solid albums, right? I think this is a really fun list and a lot of fun songs. Uh, some modern Alice classics on here like Paranormal, Paranoid Personality, Fallen in Love, Holy Water, Rats is fun. Then the close things out, The Sound of A, which is such an awesome song. Sounds like it could fit on some of the original Alice Cooper group albums. Definitely, I could definitely see it fitting on the debut, or not the debut, but Love It to Death, where they adopted that sinister kind of a sound. And um, I understand that Dennis Dunaway wrote this song for the original Alice Cooper group, and it just never made it onto one of their albums. So very happy that Alice collaborated with Dennis, finally got this on a Cooper album where it belongs, and very happy that, it did, that he did, because this is a great song. And altogether, a really solid album. I enjoy it. My number 18, Paranormal from 2017. My number 17, I'm going to go with Alice Cooper Goes to Hell from 1976, the follow-up to Welcome to My Nightmare. Um, Alice on his own, his second solo album. And this is there's some good stuff on here. I think that altogether, it's a pretty lackluster album. But, you know, some songs that are much better in a live setting that came off this album, such as Go to Hell, um, I Never Cry guilty right and um like i said not bad not great either pretty lackluster pretty in the middle about it that's why it's in the middle of my list alice cooper goes to hell for 1976 
Number 16, I'm going to go with Flush the Fashion from 1980. You know, this album, it's pretty polarizing in the sense that there's a lot of negative stuff about it. First of all, it's one of Alice Cooper's Blackout albums. He really doesn't remember recording anything from here. Deep into his addiction to cocaine at this point. You can see Alice on the back. It looks pretty rough, right? Um, and the songs are pretty short. The album, I think, is about 30 minutes. It might actually be under 30 minutes. But um, you know, like I said, the song's pretty short. About two to three minutes long. I think if you got a three-minute song on this album, that's pretty long for the songs off of this album. Um, that being said, I enjoy it for what it is. I don't think that it's the best Alice Cooper album ever, but I think that it's a pretty solid release from Alice. And, you know, some standouts for me here. Talk Talk, Clones, Pain is, like, my favorite Alice Cooper song. I love that song. I feel like it's the best Alice Cooper song that nobody's ever heard, right? A lot of people tuning out to Alice at this point. Alice trying to be New Wave turned a lot of people off, but... Pain is just such a great song. Some of Alice's best lyrics. I just, I think that song is so awesome. I was really happy to see them bring it back and do it live in 2017. I think that was really cool. Uh, Aspirin Damage, Nuclear Infected, Grim Facts, Model Citizen is really good. Headline to close things out. Produced by Roy Thomas Baker. Pretty solid stuff on here. 1980s flush the fashion. I enjoy it. Number 15, I'm going to go with Alice's most recent album, Detroit Stories, from earlier this year. Uh, I was really pleased with this album. It definitely grew on me. Um, I think that the lyrics are kind of wacky, right? At first, I wasn't huge on a lot of the lead singles, but they definitely, uh, I definitely warmed up to them, right? Rock and Roll, a cover to kick things off by Velvet Underground. Go Man Go, which was originally on the Breadcrumbs EP, but put on this album as well. Our Love Will Change the World, which I thought was really weird for an Alice, Al Alice song, right? On an Alice Cooper album, but, you know, I definitely came around to it. Social Debris is great, featuring some of the members of the original group. Thousand Dollar High Heel Shoes, Hail Mary's really fun, Detroit Stories, uh, no, excuse me, Detroit City 2021, the album is Detroit Stories, but Detroit City 2021, which was originally on The Eyes of Alice Cooper, but re-recorded for 2021, Drunken in Love, which I think the intro reminds me a lot of an ACDC song, which is really cool, I definitely got that vibe from that song, Independence Dave, I Hate You, Wonderful World has got this super heavy undertone to it, you know, maybe it's in the lyrics, but there's just something about it that just seems like super heavy. If you really want to break it down and digest it, there's a really heavy hidden message in it, which, you know, I, I enjoy, right? I love when Alice does, you know, heavy material. Sister Anne, Hanging by a Thread, Don't Give Up is a really good message, right? Uh, Shut Up and Rock, sounds like it could be something off of Razor Fist and Yell, and then East Side Story to close things out. I dig that song. I dig this whole album, produced by Bob Ezrin, the most recent Alice Cooper album, number 15 on my list. Number 14 on my list, I'm going to go with Raise Your Fist and Yell from 1987. Uh, pretty heavy at times here, right? I think the lyrics can be a little cheesy, but, you know, Alice also writes some really interesting lyrics here, right? So a bit of a contrast in lyrical styles here, I think, you know, you've got a creepier side of Alice in songs like Gale and Roses on White Lace. And then you got songs like Freedom, Lock Me Up, Give Me the Radio Back, or Give the Radio Back, that are, you know, full of 80s cheese, right? I think a little bit of pandering to the, you know, the teenagers, probably the target audience here as Alice made his comeback, following a hiatus in the mid uh, to late 80s. But, you know, fine material on here. I enjoy it. My number 14 on the list going to be Raise Your Fist and Yell from 1987. Coming up at number 13, the predecessor to Raise Your Fist and Yell, Alice's Big Return album in 1986. Of course, I'm talking about Constrictor. Alice returning after a hiatus for about three years. Following the recording of Dada in 1983, Alice would take a leave to get himself clean, right, to devote time to his family. Wasn't sure if he would ever take the stage again, but he did return in 1986, and he put out a very solid album. You know, I think it's super fun. Some standouts for me here. Teenage Frankenstein, Throw My Gorilla, Life and Death of the Party, The World Needs Guts, The Great American Success Story, and He's Back, The Man Behind the Mask. Probably my favorite song on here. And uh, like I said, super fun. Number 13 on my list, Constrictor from 1986. Number 12 on the list, I'm going to go with The Last Temptation from 1994. And Alice beginning to change his sound a bit here to... Um, conform to the alternative sound, the Seattle sound of the time. You have Chris Cornell, who guest vocals on, on uh, Stolen Prayer, which is really cool. And Alice putting out a very solid release here in 1994. During Alice's resurgence period following Trash in 1989, he would then release Hey Stupid in 1991, and now in 1994, The Last Temptation. Some other standouts in addition to Stolen Prayer. You got Sideshow, Nothing's Free, Lost in America, You're My Temptation is Awesome, Unholy War, uh, and then 
to close things out, Cleanse by Fire, another really great song, very solid release by Alice here. I think super underrated in his discography. Number 12 on my list, The Last Temptation from 1994. Number 11 on the list, maybe a bit of a controversial pick here, but I'm going to go with Dada at number 11 from 1983. The last album Alice would do until 1986, right? Like I said, he would take a hiatus after this album to address his addictions to drugs and alcohol. Alice is just a complete mess at this point. A lot of mystery surrounding Alice at this point. Not a lot of pictures uh, surfaced from uh, Alice at around this time, right? No pictures of Alice on the album. You got a picture of him when he was in high school, but nothing from this era, right? No photographs. Um, and I think that this is a really underrated album, definitely saved by Dick Wagner and Bob Ezrin. Bob Ezrin pulling a really solid album out of Alice at this point, and Dick Wagner just with some awesome, awesome guitar soloing here. Um, I think Dick Wagner is one of the most underrated guitarists of all time, one of my favorites, a legendary uh, session guitarist, studio guitarist, whatever you want to call him, and some standouts here. Dad, Dad, the title track is super creepy, right? A spoken... Um, instrumental piece. Well, it's not really instrumental, but it's definitely a spoken piece um, by Bob Ezrin. He actually gets a writing credit here for that title track, Enough's Enough, which, you know, this would be the last album in the blackout uh, period for Alice, so Enough's Enough. No coincidence that he would name a song like that before he addressed his drugs and alcohol addictions. Formerly Warmer is super creepy, and it's got one of my first of several favorite guitar solos on here from Dick Wagner. Right, No Man's Land, Dyslexia, then you got Scarlet and Sheba, which is super heavy, right, uh, Alice sounds really good on here, Dick Wagner sounds great on guitar, some really cool riffing from Dick Wagner, I Love America is fun, Fresh Blood, right, and then number nine, Pass the Gun Around, um, one of the best Alice Cooper songs, like, you know, like Pain, which no one has ever heard, right, a lot of people weren't listening to Alice at this point, may not be familiar at all with some of the material off of this album, and passed a gun around at number, track number nine to close things out with just one of my favorite guitar solos of all time from Dick Wagner. Um, the track ends with a gunshot signaling the end of the album, right? Hence, passed a gun around, and this would be the last we would hear of Alice until 1986 when he returned with Constrictor, right? But a really solid album, uh, one of my favorites from him. I couldn't put it, you know, any higher on the list just because there's just some classic, classic material still to come. But number 11 is going to be Dada from 1983. Number 10 on my list. Now we're into the top 10. I'm going to go with Hey Stupid from 1991. Really solid al album by Alice here. Alice continuing with his revival started with Trash in 1989. Some super commercial stuff on here, which is not a bad thing, right? Alice appealing to the masses in 91, which is really good. Some standouts for me, Hey Stupid, Loves a Loaded Gun, Snakebite has just got such an explosive chorus, uh, Burning Our Bed, Dangerous Tonight, Might As Well Be On Mars, Feed My Frankenstein is really overplayed by Alice, but it's still a good song, right? Perfect song for Halloween when this, uh, this uh, video will go up. Hurricane Years, Die For You, Wind Up Toy to Close Things Off, produced by Peter Collins, really solid, you can see Alice on the back there. My number 10, Hey Stupid from 1991. Coming up at number nine, I'm going to go with Muscle of Love, uh, the final album by the original Alice Cooper group from 1973. It's regarded as the weakest Alice Cooper group album. I would agree with that, right? Um, well, actually, obviously, Pretty For You and Easy Action would be the weakest Alice Cooper group albums, but the weakest albums from that classic period of the original group, right? I would I would say that that's fair. Um, but still a really solid release by the band. I definitely enjoy it for what it is. You know, the band falling apart at this point, but still piecing together a really solid release. Muscle of Love, Hard Hearted Alice, Man with the Golden Gun is awesome, Big Apple Dreamin', Crazy Little Child, Teenage Lament, you know, really solid stuff, I enjoy it, pretty cool cover there, it's like a milk carton kind of a thing, right, or a piece of cardboard, and um, my number nine on the list is going to be Muscle of Love from 1973, coming up at number eight, I am going to go with Trash from 1989, Trash was Alice's commercial revival, right? The big hit, the ballad Poison, as well as some other ballads on here, such as uh, Hell is Living Without You and Only My Heart Talking. You know, some other good stuff on here. Spark in the Dark, House of Fire, Why Trust You, Bed of Nails, the title track, I'm Your Gun, This Maniac's In Love With You. Just top to bottom, it's a great album. Produced by Desmond Child, one of my favorite Alice albums. Coming in at number eight, it's going to be Trash from 1989. Coming up at number seven, I'm going to go with School's Out from 1972. Everybody knows the big hit off here, the title track, School's Out, but some other solid stuff on here like Looney Tune, Gutter Cat vs. the Jets, Blue Turk, My Stars, Public Animal Number 9 is really fun, Alma Mater. I think that these songs go uh, a bit unrecognized because everybody knows School's Out, but like I said, some really solid stuff on here. Produced by Bob Ezrin, um, really solid stuff, my number seven, School's Out. 
Coming up at number six, I'm going to go with Welcome to My Nightmare from 1975. Uh, following the breaking up of the original Alice Cooper group, Alice would take the name Alice Cooper on uh, for himself and go on a solo career, which has lasted over 45 years, right? And, you know, some really classic Alice Cooper material on here, like Welcome to My Nightmare, The Black Widow, Only Women Bleed, Department of Youth, Steven, probably my favorite song off this album, Escape to Close Things Out, really solid, one of my favorite concept albums of all time, and number six on my list, Welcome to My Nightmare from 1975. Into the top five now, I'm going to go with 1978's From the Inside, uh, Alice getting out of the asylum following his um, checking into uh, Cure His Addiction to Alcohol, Alice checking out, um, writing a concept album about his time in the asylum, right? All the songs about his experiences or characters that he met while inside of the asylum um, stand out for me here from the inside. Which, Wish I Were Born in Beverly Hills, The Quiet Room is one of my favorite Alice Cooper songs of all time. Nurse Rosetta, Millie and Billy, Sirius, How You Gonna See Me Now, For Veronica's Sake, Jackknife Johnny, and Inmates Were All Crazy, produced by David Foster. Um, Alice working pretty closely with Bernie Taupin, who also works with Elton John. You can definitely hear some Elton elements on this album as well. Um, but altogether, one of my favorite Alice Cooper albums. Really solid stuff, a great concept piece, and just such an awesome album cover too, with Alice's face. And then in the reflection of, of his eyes, you can see all the people from the asylum, right? So great stuff on here. Cracking my top five. Number five on my list from the inside from 1978. My number four, I'm going to go with Brutal Planet from 2000. Alice uh, embracing more of an industrial side, right? If you look at the back, it doesn't even look like the same guy. Uh, just super aggressive, super angry material on here. Uh, some Christian metal influences as well here. Some great stuff. Brutal Planet, Wicked Young Man, Sanctuary, Blow Me a Kiss, Eat Some More, Pick Up the Bones. It's just so, so heavy. It's the little things. Take It Like a Woman is pretty much a shameless uh, try to uh, recreation of Only Women Bleed, but still, you know, really good stuff. And Cold Machines with just got that awesome riff, right? Super catchy. It reminds me a bit of a Marilyn Manson song, right? Which Alice, no doubt, structured a lot of these songs to sound like, right? Alice incorporating some industrial elements. He has gone on record and said, you know, I was a fan of um, what Manson was doing at the time musically, so he wanted to incorporate some of, you know, Manson's uh, elements and influences onto his own album, right, which would explain the change in, you know, style here, embracing a more hard-edged industrial kind of style. I, I absolutely love this album. I think it's fantastic. One of my favorite Alice Cooper albums. Pretty underrated in the sense that, you know, not a lot of people rank it in their top five, but I, like I said, absolutely love this album. My number four from 2000, Brutal Planet. Coming up at number three, I'm going to go with Billion Dollar Babies from 1973. And this album, just one of the greatest albums Alice Cooper, or the original Alice Cooper group ever made, right? My number three on the list for obvious reasons, you know, just fantastic stuff on here. The original Alice Cooper group had really hit their stride by 1973, um, and some standouts for me here. Hello, Hooray, Elected, Billion Dollar Babies, Unfinished Sweet, even though I think it might go a little bit long, right? No More Mr. Nice Guy. The epic Generation Landslide, Sick Things, and I Love the Dead to close things out, just super creepy, right? That was the original Alice Cooper Group's M.O. at the time, Try to Be Shocking, produced by Bob Ezrin. Just fantastic stuff, right? Pretty cool cover as well. Uh, awesome title track. Love it. I love it to death, I guess you can say. And my number three on the list, Billion Dollar Babies so from 1973. Into the top two here, and I'm going to try and record these both in one take. Um, my number two, I'm going to go with 1971's Love It to Death, the Alice Cooper group finally finding their footing, um, produced by Bob Ezrin. He really encouraged the band to find themselves and create something that hadn't been done before. And this album definitely designed to shock people, to disturb people, right? To create as much publicity as possible. Uh, a big hit for them off this album was I'm 18, you know, some disturbing stuff on here that was meant to shock people like Ballad of Dwight Fry, Hallowed Be My Name, Black Juju. Right, Is It My Body, and then some other really good stuff on here, Caught in a Dream, Long Way to Go, Sun Arise, Second Coming, right, which merges so well with that piano, right into Dwight Fry. Dwight Fry, probably my favorite uh, Alice Cooper song of all time. Coming up at number two, I'm going to go with 1971's Love It to Death. Now number one, if you're an Alice Cooper fan, you know what's coming next, Killer from 1971. Um, you know, I think that this album, it just encapsulates everything that I want in an Alice Cooper album. It's creepy, there's humor throughout as well, you know, some great playing here by the original members, right? Just stacked top to bottom. Uh, the album kicks off with Under My Wheels, which would become a live staple for Alice for pretty much the rest of his career, right? Be My Lover, Halo of Flies, how great is Desperado? I mean, come on. 
uh, You Drive Me Nervous, Yeah, 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 is, you know, probably the deepest song on here, right? A uh, really big deep cut for Alice, right? Doesn't really play it that often. Probably the least out of any song on this album, but really solid. Dead Babies, definitely meant to disturb people, right? And Killers to close things off. Really solid stuff. And my favorite Alice Cooper album of all time. It was, you know, Sky's the Limit for the Alice Cooper group from here. My one and two. Love it to death and Killer, both from 1971. So uh, that concludes my list. Thank you guys so much for watching. And stick around because it's time now for some rare Alice Cooper memorabilia. So you made it to the end of the video, and like I promised, a really rare piece of Alice memorabilia in my collection. I have right here my copy of Me, Alice. Of course, this book by Alice, really hard to find, right? Let alone in good condition, and my copy is signed. So let me take this. I want to be careful here. I don't really like to, you know, touch this book. I know it's pretty rare, but yeah. Check out the autograph on the book. Hold on a second. There you go. Signed by Alice. Pretty cool stuff here. I know that this book, super hard to find, really happy to have it in my collection, and um, you know, pretty awesome stuff, right? So there you have it, a rare piece of Alice memorabilia in my collection. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel, please tap the bell for notifications, share this around, tell your friends, leave a comment, let me know what your favorite Alice Cooper albums are, and until next time, it's the CD guy, Johnny Z, signing off. Take care, guys.